Hello my dear students and welcome back to English class. Today we are going to learn a new lesson. So before that observe this picture. What do you see here? It is a bird, right? Do you know which bird is that? Yes, it is a great Indian bustard. So today we are going to learn a new lesson on autobiography of a great Indian bustard written by Dr. Pramod Patil. He, Dr. Pramod Patil wants us to make aware about the extinction of the bird because it is critically endangered. That means it is in danger of extinction. Therefore, he wants to bring us to our notice that we have to protect this bird. So, let's enjoy this lesson, Autobiography of a Great Indian Bustard. Now, you must have heard the word called as autobiography, right? Now, what does autobiography mean? And before I start uh, the lesson, you have to open your textbook. So, I am going to read out to you and make you understand. Fine. Now you have to open page number 6 and keep. So this is the part which I am going to teach. Now, autography, autobiography means what? Your teacher might have told you earlier also about what is an autobiography. Right? Now here in this word, there are actually three words. That is, one is auto, second, bio, third, graphy. Now, auto means self, bio means life and graphy, here we could interpret it, it as a story, right? So, actually autobiography can be meant as story of my life. That means when any person or any animate or inanimate object means any living or any non-living object can tell us about their story that will be called as an autobiography. Here it is an autobiography of a great Indian bustard. Fine. So that means here great Indian bustard wants to tell us about his story. So let's enjoy this story. Now which is the heaviest bird? Now here uh, Great Indian Bustard is asking a question. Which is the heaviest flying bird in India? So here the lesson opens up with a question. And this type of a question is called as a rhetorical question. A rhetorical question is the one wherein you do not have to give any answer. Okay. Here no answer is expected. But the speaker may expect you know uh, may pose the question or ask the question and the answer is within the question itself so the uh, answer is very obvious from the question itself is that clear students so it is a type of a uh, rhetorical question so answer is obvious from the question itself so here the heaviest flying bird you know uh, it is trying to tell that it, it is itself Okay, uh, the great Indian bustard. Okay, so the answer to the question is, which is the heaviest flying bird in India? Well, friends, it's me. The uh, speaker, here the speaker is the great Indian bustard itself. Is trying to tell, well, friends, it's me, the great Indian bustard. I feel proud to be known as the great Indian bustard. Okay, so here the bird is trying to tell that it is proud to be known as the great Indian. Now, no other bird has the title called as great Indian. So, that means bustard uh, from India uh, since it is one of the endangered species or endemic. It is found in India itself, you know, endemic to 
India. Therefore, it has been given a title called as Great Indian Bustard. So, here the uh, Great Indian Bustard who is the speaker here is trying to tell us that it is proud to be known as the Great Indian Bustard. Later on, it adds to it, I have more than 30 different names in various Indian languages. That means since it is found, you know, it was found earlier in most of the parts of India and in every part of India, there was a different name. Now, we, uh, it, is, it is found even in Maharashtra. Okay, so in Marathi, I am known as Maldok or Hmm. Okay, Maldok or Hum. So, remember dear students, since you all are Maharashtrians, you should know the name of Great Indian Bustard as Maldo or Hum. Hum, why? Because the sound produced by the Bustard, Great Indian Bustard is sounding like Hum. That is why the name is also Hum. Remember this. Now, now why it is called as the Great Indian uh, Indian bustard, it's because heaviest bird. Sorry, why it is called as the heaviest bird um, among all other birds in India? It's because it can weigh up to 18 kilos. Okay, 18 kilos is too many, uh, too much uh, weight, right? If you take a hen or a uh, um, you know, cock, you can maximum it can weigh around 4 kilos or so. So, you can imagine 18 kilos is very um, uh, you know, weighty. Uh, very huge correct so 18 kilos it can weigh and even it can stand up to four feet in height four feet in height means almost of your height now whatever height you might be having in standard five that is up to four feet so uh, even great indian bustard can weigh up to four feet in height almost reaching up to your shoulder so you can see here i've placed a picture wherein you can see that it it is almost, you know, about uh, of your height. Now, this men's height might be 6 feet or maybe 5.5 or so. But your height uh, can be up to 4 feet. So, you can imagine how, uh, um, you know, how much is the height of that bird, right? So, it can uh, stand up to 4 feet in height, reaching up to your shoulders or even higher. So, that means uh, some of you might be little, high, you know, little taller as compared to 4 feet. Then it might reach to your shoulders. Um, uh, sorry, uh, yes. Or even higher, that means if you are shorter than 4 feet, then the bird uh, itself will be uh, taller than you. So, here even higher means taller than you. I have now, it is trying to describe itself, how it looks like from outside, okay? So, it says that I have a long uh, white neck, okay? So, the neck of the bird is white in color. It has brown wings. You can see the color of the wings here. It, it is brown. Then tall yellow legs. You can see even the legs here. They are tall as well as yellow in color and black cap on my head okay so black cap on my head why it is trying to tell it uh, tell it like a cap it because it looks like a cap on its head so you can see on the head top part of the um, head part of the uh, bird it is black in color and it is you know elegant it looks like a you know cap itself that is why it is trying to tell black cap uh, on my head fine now my wife okay my wife now here it is very funny right that it is trying to tell that it is having its uh, its wife and so uh, my wife uh, he says that mrs bustard like how we human being uh, say um, uh, wives and husband, Mr. and Mrs. So same way even it is trying to tell. So when you, whenever you are uh, trying to write an autobiography, you can take these type of points also. Right. So my wife, Mrs. Bustard, it's smaller. Okay. Smaller means smaller, lesser in height and slimmer. Slimmer means what? Thinner. Here the word slimmer means thinner than I am. And her neck is not white. Okay. Her neck is not white. Like that of Mr. Bustard. That means the male uh, uh, great Indian Bustard here. Okay. Its neck is not white. Whose? Wives. Okay. But 
I have heard humans say that we both look impressive. Impressive means both of them when they are together, they look very impressive. Means they can impress or attract anyone. Right students? Fine. So this is regarding the first paragraph. Let us now go to the next paragraph here. Okay, which is given here, I live on grassland. So here, look at this uh, two paragraphs here, two, two, three paragraphs. I'm going to explain this now. Fine. Now, it is trying to uh, tell us about its habitat now. Habitat means the place wherein they live. Fine. So here, it is trying to tell that I live on grassland and deserts along with my other friends. Okay, other friends means here it wants to tell that wherever it stays, there are other animals also like chinkara, blackbird, okay, and larks. Okay, now uh, chinkara and blackbird are type of deers. So you can see the pictures of uh, chinkara. Chinkara is the first picture here. Then below in the desert which I have kept is the black buck you can see how the color of it that is why it derives its name as black buck both of them are types of deers and lark is a bird so all these three animals are also found where uh, great indian bustard is found so that is why it says that i live with my other friends chinkara black buck and larks now it is trying to tell about its eating habit I eat everything including snakes, lizards, small fruits, berries and all sorts of insects. Small berries and all so sorts of insects here. Fine. So, uh, it is trying to tell. Uh, okay. So, that's a very healthy habit. So, healthy habit here. What it tries to tell us that we should have a balanced diet. So, here for uh, a bird, you know that it can eat a snake, a lizard. It can even eat the fruits and berries as, as well as insects. So, that means it is having a balanced diet by eating not only one type of thing. But it can uh, it is eating different types of things here. So, that is why it is trying to say that's a very healthy habit. But like how we have, uh, though we are eating so many different things, we also have certain f uh, food items as our favorite food items, right? So, even Great Indian Bustard has favorite food items like that of uh, the grasshoppers and the beetles, okay? grasshoppers and the beetles it is having as its favorite uh, food okay so you can see the picture of a grasshopper here and a beetle one of the beetles so this is the uh, red uh, beetle okay now next it is trying to tell that what are its habits okay so what are its habits so let's see what are its habits so when it starts raining okay when it starts raining all gather at our favorite grasslands where there are no people to disturb us. Okay. So, it is trying to tell what? It is trying to tell that when uh, it is starting to rain, all of them are gathering at their favorite place. That is, grassland is their favorite place wherein no one will come there to disturb them. So, uh, when it is raining, it is trying to tell that it is trying to perform uh, its dance. I perform a wonderful dance. I perform a wonderful dance by gulping air in the uh, special feathery pouch. Now here, pouch means what? What is meant by a pouch? Pouch is like a bag-like structure, okay? Just below its neck. A sort of a bag or maybe you can call it as pocket like uh, space which is present you know um, below the neck. So I perform a wonderful dance by gulping air in the special feathery 
uh, pouch you can see how it can uh, make that uh, pouch and it can extend up to the ground you can see how big it is right so uh, it is uh, when it is dancing it is just gulping in air uh, with the special feathery pouch attached below its neck now this pouch helps me to produce a resonating sound okay now what is a resonating sound a sound which is very loud deep and clear sound that continues for a long time that is called as a resonating sound okay i repeat resonating sound means a loud deep clear sound that continues for a long time okay like for example if you just take a steel vessel and if you take a spoon and just heat the spoon on the um, you know on the steel vessel then you can get a sound which can remain for a longer time so that type of sound is called as a resonating sound fine now uh, this uh, uh, okay similar this pouch helps me to produce a resonating sound similar to the one produced by cow okay similar to the one which is produced by the cow okay so like this is the sound of the uh, uh, you know cow and similar sound is of the great indian bustard also fine so i dance now after when it is raining it is saying i dance in joy with puffed out feathers okay puffed out feathers and cocked up tail and drop down wings okay it helps me to impress my soul mate soul mate here okay first i will explain to you what is the meaning of the word puffed out so puffed out means made bigger and rounder you can see how it has spread its wing okay you can all also call it as spreading its wings here so it is uh, here puffed out is the phrase okay which means made bigger and rounder or you can also call it as spread okay puffed out then cocked up cocked up tail means also means similar okay similar meaning it has that is cocked up tail means the tail of it is raised up when it is dancing okay it is raised up and drop down wings so wings which are the below the feathers are you know drop down drop down means little lower fine so i dance when it is dancing it will have its feather puffed out cocked up tail and drop down wings it helps me why it is doing so because it has to impress attract impress means what attract okay to impress someone means to attract someone here my soulmate my soulmate means the uh, over here since a great indian bustard here the male is speaking therefore the uh, soulmate of it will be the female uh, great indian bustard is that clear students okay fine now let's move on to the next part of the lesson okay now you know that we birds lay eggs and our young ones hatch out of eggs you know that uh, you you must have heard that most of the birds almost all the birds lay eggs and uh, from the eggs young ones are hatching out of the eggs right so you know that we birds lay eggs and our young ones hatch out of eggs mother gib lays just one egg directly on the ground now here you can see how it has you know uh, uh, made gib okay gib is great indian bustard short form of great indian bustard so like how we are used to write the messages in the phone with short forms the same way it is also trying to you know it's very funny it seems to be very funny here correct that it is also trying to uh, you know pronounce its name with a short form okay so gib is great indian bustard so uh, it is giving its importance fine so mother gib lays just one egg directly on the ground okay directly on the ground means that means there is a danger that it might uh, break easily right 
but here why it is uh, laying directly on the ground you will understand fine now uh, you can see how it is trying to lay the egg on the ground directly now here they do not believe in building the nest we don't believe in building the nest okay now uh, they don't require uh, why that you will understand now that with the next paragraph on the next page that is page number 7 so we have to we have a special trick to protect our eggs from predator okay predator here means predator is an animal that hunts or kills uh, or eats other animals or maybe they are eggs okay so what they are doing they have a special trick now why they don't require nest it's because they have a special trick to protect their eggs from predators okay predators means once again i tell you predators are those animals that hunt kill and eat other animals or maybe their eggs okay so they have a special trick let's try to understand what is their special trick now the special trick is the egg looks like a stone okay how is the stone it is uh, sorry how is the egg egg is looking like a stone that means it is having a effect called as camouflage camouflage means what you know the color wherever uh, they are uh, been uh, you know uh, like for example chameleon can change its color when it is moving from one place to another that uh, effect or that property is called as camouflage here uh, it is uh, also uh, why uh, it is protected it's because their egg looks like a stone you can see how it looks like okay the egg looks like the stone therefore the predators are not able to see exactly what is that they think that it is a stone and therefore it is getting you know protection directly now who are the enemies or who are the predators of the eggs of uh, great indian bustard let's see who are they monitor lizard okay monitor lizard this is one of the biggest lizard it is called as monitor lizard okay you can see the picture of a monitor lizard foxes okay dogs pigs you all know right snakes and even eagles are enemies of my egg okay so that means these are the animals which can eat the eggs of the great indian bustard not only egg but even uh, once the egg hatches out the chick comes out of it okay chick means the young one of the great indian bustard the small great indian bustard fine so uh, here these are the enemies of the uh, their egg and chick but my wife protects the egg from all of them okay how it protects because it sits there for one year throughout okay by the time our young ones hatches out of the egg rains arrive that means whenever it is whenever it is the time to come uh, for the rain to come that is the time for the eggs to hatch out okay so that means before the rains they will be hatching out okay so there is plenty of grass okay plenty of grass whenever you know uh, it is hatching out there is lot of grass around swarming with insects swarming with insect means lot of insects are there at that time you know that during the rainy season in your houses also so many insects are coming right so here during the rainy season lot of grass will be growing at the same time there will be so many insects uh, moving around fine so and that gives them the fresh food for my family so that means it is trying to tell that they can eat grass as well as the insects here okay young ones of other birds soon fly away from the nest but a great indian bustard mother and chick stays together for nearly one year okay so you know you might have seen uh, the hen and all uh, they are around with their mother around maybe around one and a half month to two months fine but the great indian bustard uh, mother as well as chick stay together for nearly one year fine now the chick learns many good habits from the mother that means how you know you might have seen even a hen teaches uh, its uh, chicken uh, to um 
uh, you know, uh, uh, good habits. The same way, all the birds are trying to give them good, uh, good, uh, good habits to their young ones. Even the great bustard, also the mother great bustard, teaches them uh, good habits. Now, you may have heard about, okay, now we will move on to the next paragraph. You may have heard about a great human friend of ours. Okay, so great hum, uh, human friend of ours means the friend of the birds. Okay, who is called as Dr. Salim Ali. You might have heard this name, right? If you have not heard, let me tell you something about Dr. Salim Ali. Okay, so he is actually an uh, um, uh, ornithologist as well as a naturalist. Or not, ornithologist means a person who studies uh, about the birds. So, he was the first person to conduct a systematic survey uh, of all the birds in India. And therefore, he is also called as the bird man of India. Remember about him. Okay. So, he is, um, he has written many books on the birds. And even there is a bird sanctuary in Goa on the Shorao Island. Okay. Uh, uh, in his honor, the name is given to this sanctuary bird sanctuary that is dr salim ali bird sanctuary you can find out from the net you will get a lot of information about this salim ali dr salim ali bird sanctuary which is located in goa that is on shorao island fine now this person who has worked a lot on the birds okay he had even suggested that we should be given the status of the national bird okay of our country you know national bird means it's a bird which is having uh, you know the rights of all uh, you know i mean a national bird national animal how we are having so national bird title was sub, uh, you know given by dr salim ali but then the honor went to their beautiful relative the peacock okay so you can see you we know that uh, our national bird is peacock I am happy to tell that I am the state bird of Rajasthan. Okay. So, nevertheless, though it is not getting national bird as a title, but at least it is getting the state bird uh, title of Rajasthan because it is mostly found in the states of India such as Rajasthan, uh, Gujarat and Maharashtra. These three places it is found now. Fine. Now, we have got... 10 sanctuaries for our protection okay sanctuaries means a place wherein uh, you know a natural habitat wherein the animals are getting protection okay it is their own habitat in which they live and they will be guarded by the forest guards people are not simply allowed to go there uh, you know and uh, do misbehavior or kill or hunt or poach the animals so such places are called as sanctuaries which are protected okay so you can go and uh, visit these sanctuaries but you cannot take anything from them neither you can kill or hunt any animal so such places are called as sanctuaries we have got 10 sanctuaries for our protection but sadly a number is still going down though there are sanctuaries they are protected their number is still going down okay now actually they used to leave first in all parts of india before okay but slowly because of the growing population of men pushed us away from more than 90 percent of our homes more than 90 percent as it is mentioned here since it is it was found earlier in you know almost uh, the whole country the different parts of india now from 90 percent of the different places it has been you know wiped out or it has it is not present now okay now why this has happened it's because uh, there are reasons he, uh, the great indian buster wants to tell that we are afraid of hunters that kill us for fun okay so they are these hunters are killing them for fun with the uh, okay killing them for fun we also die due to electric power 
okay so not only the hunters but even they are dying because of the electric power lines that we can't see while flying okay so they cannot see when they are flying they cannot see the power lines and because of that due to the shock and all they are dying okay they are dying okay it is very sad okay so see how uh, the population of these great indian bustard is getting decreased so uh, it is trying to tell that we are losing our homes so that means it is trying to tell us that we need to protect it okay it is trying to appeal us appeal okay that we have to protect human beings have to protect it because they have lost their homes their habitat has been destroyed by human beings okay uh, not only uh, uh, by killing them by hunting them but due to electric power lines but even due to pollution also most of them have got you know wiped off from these places today only last 200 of us are left in the world it is very sad dear students only 200 you can imagine fine that means it is trying to tell us that we have to protect them so it is trying to tell that we need your support and love in order to survive okay so everybody has the right to survive isn't it students even birds you know though they are animals we cannot say that they don't have the right we all of them have right to live so it is trying to ask our support it is asking our support as well as love in order to survive so it is trying to appeal that can you help us okay and it is trying to tell how we can help this great indian bustard what we can do you can write letters to your leaders and make an appeal to help us letters to your leaders means we can uh, you know send the letters to different ministers to make them protected okay to keep them protected wherever they are you can make my drawing and submit it to your teacher to show that i am so important okay because i need your help so when you do your drawing and just put it as a poster in the class and all people will you know try to um, understand why it is put okay it's because it is very important for us to you know give them support to live so when you make a drawing or put posters around okay people come to know people become aware that it is getting extinct or it is in danger of extinction you can discuss this with your parents come to see us at a sanctuary okay so now it is trying to tell that it is not found everywhere earlier there were how many uh, you know many were there uh, uh, all around the world they were there now only 200 of them are surviving that means uh, it is now only present in the sanctuary and not any other habitat so if you want to visit they are saying that you have to come to our sanctuary because you will not see us in other places at all only in the protected places called as sanctuaries and who knows if humans don't help us none of us will be left on the earth isn't it very sad students you know so many animals have gone extinct correct now this also might get extinct later on you know dinosaurs are not there dodo bird is not there okay uh, tasmanian tiger is not there so many animals have become extinct even this might get extinct if we don't take a right step at the right time to protect them so we should not allow anybody to kill them or hunt them for their own benefit selfish uh, benefit right so it is trying to tell that if humans don't help us none of us will be left on the earth and you will only see us in the pictures so this bird has to uh, uh, through its autobiography it has tried to make us aware that it is getting extinct or it is becoming endangered uh, and there is a chance that it might get lost entirely from the world so as uh, human beings we have a responsibility to keep them safe protect them in their own habitat 
is that clear students okay so help them in need thank you very much let's meet in the next class so what you have to do now you have to read the lesson thoroughly try to learn um, the different words from the lesson meanings of the words and even it is a very informative lesson so you have to not only you have to um, you know for the sake of studying you have to uh, do this but you have to remember is that clear students thank you